I know they've got life gain and we should defend and kill it, but I'm so greedy. Basic plan, two caps. Right. But that's a uh, plus four, plus four on two creatures, so plus eight. And we have to go 12, 15, 16, 17. We can get really close. Down to three. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game. Today, we are playing with a free to play Selesnia Landfall aggro based deck. Selesnia means the color combination of green and white. Uh, aggro means the deck moves quite quickly and we look to attack our opponent aggressively or aggro. And of course, the landfall is a mechanic within the game that will trigger whenever a land enters play. This is a very consistent mechanic because typically if you're not drawing something to interact with your opponent like a creature or an instant, you're gonna be drawing a land and that can be a dead pull in many decks but if we utilize landfall within the deck, uh, it'll just continue to power us up. So again, this is a free-to-play budget deck, zero rares, zero mythics, only commons and uncommons, also known as an artisan deck. We're going to break down the deck list, the strategies, the synergies, how to play it effectively and efficiently, you know, what opening hands you're really looking for, and all of that. If you're not into it, jump right to the gameplay footage, that's fine. Make sure to like the video on your way. Let's get into it. All right, so first things first, today we're taking a break from, you know, the top 1000 Mythic, where we currently like to sit and hang out for the new year. We're in the play queue. We're dealing with a lot of other videos on the back end. We're just looking to have a, a nice, fun and relaxing time today, looking to fine tune this deck so we can take it into some farming within the, um, you know, standard events, right? So take a look at the deck list. We're going to break it down now, uh, card by card, and then we'll go through the strategies and synergies as we go. The Fairy Guide Mother is our first card, a 1-1 one, one with flying. You know, it's always good to have a little bit of evasion through flying. It has the adventure at sorcery speed called Gift of the Fae for two. Target creature gets plus two, plus one, and gains flying until the end of turn. Not only does it self have flying, but we can give another creature of ours flying and a bit of a buff as well. Pretty cool. The downside is it is sorcery speed, so you almost always need to be using it to attack. Four copies of the Edgewall Innkeeper, a 1-1, one, one, and whenever we cast a creature spell that has Adventure, draw a card. The card can be countered, it just needs to be cast, which is pretty cool. So you are using Adventure within the deck, uh, as well as Landfall, I guess I should mention, forgetting about that uh, on the beforehand. So moving on, we do have the Skyclave Pickaxe as well. When it enters the battlefield, we will automatically equip it to a creature we control. It has landfall, so whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, equipped creature gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. We can re-equip it if that creature gets removed for three. I really like this. Giving a creature plus two, plus two whenever a land enters play, in my opinion, is very good value. Again, it is susceptible to a removal, and then we're looking at negative value, but we've got a couple tricks up our sleeve. The first being uh, Sergi's Shelter uh, and the Glacier. Glacier coming in tapped and the Shelter at instant speed, giving target creature we control protection from the color of our choice until the end of turn. Whether it be protecting it from removal or giving it unblockable for lethal, the Shelter is sure to get the job done. Fearless Fledgling is one of the most powerful uncommon creatures that I've come across in Zendikar. A 1-1 one, one with Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Fearless Fledgling. It gains flying until the end of turn. So, you know, it's going to get bigger and badder every turn and, you know, also have evasion through flying, which is quite nice. A little bit more protection through Shepherd of the Flock, another adventure spell to draw off of our edge wall innkeeper with. At instant speed for one, as the adventure, usher to safety, return target permanent you control to its owner's hand. The Shepherd himself is a 3-1 blade creature. Four copies of Return to Nature at instant speed. Choose one, destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, exile target card from a graveyard. This has very nice utility in the deck, um, whether we're hating on Kroxas or anything with escape, you know, killing enchantments or enchantment creatures as well, uh, or again, just destroying artifacts. It really covers us from everything. 
four copies of our Maruza Root Grazer, a 2-3 with Vigilance. We can tap it to put a basic land card from our hand into the battlefield, allowing us to double play lands, which is quite nice. And also allowing us to tap it to return a basic land card we control to our hand, which is, you know, not that bad either, allowing us to replay that land in the coming turn to re-trigger the landfall effects. It's got Vigilance, so we can attack before we do these tap effects as well. Into our three drops now. Uh, Kalini, Ambush, and the Territory. Territory in tapped, and at instant speed for three, the Ambush uh, will have our target creature we control fight target creature we don't control. So, you know, we're making our creatures uh, quite strong with the Pickaxe. The Fledgling gets quite strong, and then, you know, if we need to remove something, the Ambush can do that for us. Two copies of the Royaling Regrowth for three at instant speed, so we can use this offensively and defensively. Sacrifice a land, search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library, getting, if it's your turn, a triple landfall trigger, plus six, plus six uh, on your pickaxe, and plus three, plus three on your fledgling. And then, of course, you know, if it's defensively, we'll get uh, a double trigger. Moving forward, we have four copies of our migratory great horn, a three, four, mutate for three. Whenever this creature mutates, search your library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library mutating only to non-human creatures. So the Fairy Guide Mother is a great creature. The Fearless Fledgling is a great creature as well. You could even go with the Root Grazer if you want. Allowing us to grab a land from our library in play. Again, triggering the landfall abilities for everything is quite nice. Beanstalk Giant for seven. Its power and toughness are equal to the number of lands we control. Fertile Footsteps for three at sorcery speed as the adventure. To search our library for a basic land card, putting it into the battlefield and then shuffling our library. It does come in untapped, so we can utilize it this turn as well. This is quite nice because not only does it help us ramp early game, it also is a decent body late game. To come full circle, we have synergies between the Fairy Guide Mother and the Beanstalk Giant, giving it flying. That's gonna be a massive hit. We could also give flying to our Edgewall Innkeeper, right? Skyclave Pickaxe can go on anything, whether it be an Innkeeper, a Guide Mother, or a fledgling, even shepherd of the flock. It doesn't matter. It can go anywhere. Obviously something with flying is best through evasion. We can grab flying through anything through gift of the fae. It doesn't always have to be late game on our beanstalk giant. Double triggering landfalls uh, through the great horn, triple triggering through the regrowth potentially, a root grazer as well, allowing us to uh, basically double drop, which is quite nice. Fledgling is our main damage output, along with the pickaxe, draw engines through the innkeeper, via the guide mother, the shepherd of the flock, and the beanstalk giant. It's not a lot, but it's there. We have the evolving wilds, which is a land, sacrifices itself to bring in another land. That equals another double landfall trigger, again for us. Three blooming sands, five forests, and four plains to bring things to a close. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck. Tech learned a little bit on how to play the deck. As far as opening hands go, the Edgewall Innkeeper is amazing, tagged with some adventures. I also just love to see the Fearless Fledgling as it is our main damage output. The Pickaxe is also quite nice to see. The rest is just fine. You know, make sure you have a white land and a green land so you can play the cards that you draw when you draw them without having to wait for land. And most importantly, don't brick. Two land at the minimum, three is what I like to see. Thanks for your time and attention. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share the channels to your friend. Download Magic the Gathering Arena Assistant for free to everybody on Windows within the description link below. Gaining info to your collection, your statistics with all of your decks, general metagame analysis so you can see what decks everybody's playing in each different format, uh, and so much more. So check that out. That's for free to everybody on Windows in the description below. Let's get into the gameplay footage now. And again, we'll see you in a few minutes with our wrap-up thoughts. All right, we go first. Let's get after it. Nice and slow. Or we go fast. I say let's go fast. Edgewell Innkeeper is nice, but not a necessity. Skyclave Pickaxe in play. Yup. Have a life. Hit for three. Looking for more land.
the pixie. Uh, that is a land, yeah. I guess we should have played the fledgling first. That's on me. I was focused on the root grazer. <clears throat> right, and then we can be double playing land each turn. So I think it's worth the sacrifice. Just those little, you know, second thoughts that can creep in, right? Like, oh, was that a good idea? Or could have we have done this instead? Uh, I always do that. I'm always second guessing. Oh, no. That's unpleasant. Take our hit. It's basic land, that sucks. Right, return target, basic land, yeah. I'm just not sure it's worth the return to nature there yet, right? If anything, you know, we go after the, the Haven, I think, instead. The fledglings hopefully take us home. If we can't attack... Then we just pick X first. Fledglings are forever. Pick X goes away. Take the hit, right? Down to 10 or they lose their pixie. Pickaxe is ready to go on a fledgling. They take their whole turn for a fertile footsteps. They still are at one, two, three, four available mana here. Three cards in hand. Oh, it's the snapper. Pigaxe to Fledgling. Land in taps. Yeah. It's close. Right, if we had both root grazers in play, we could bounce a land and then play it as a second. But we just have to take what we can get. Down to one. We can bounce this forest to our hand on their end step. We have protection next turn as well. Not that I think we need it. They have six, seven, eight available mana. For all we know, it's an Ugin. Just don't say his name three times. Right? They're taking their draw. That's all their mana, other than the Llanowar Visionary and Pixie Leaf. So they have two up, plus they have two flyers to defend. Got to do it. Force to our hand. Nice. That's pretty cool.
And then we can buff up again. But we're already killing them. They're already double blocking. So it doesn't make much sense. Take our hit. Pixie's block. Another Grazer in play. And, um... Yeah, that comes in regularly, which is nice, so... We can just pass, I guess. Up to two life. Ooh, the whale. What does this thing do? We create a 1-1 one, one red pirate. But this creature attacks each combat if able. Interesting. Oh, creatures we control. I guess we could probably just bounce that token. And that would be fine. And, uh, you know, we're also attacking in the air with all of our uh, power up. So, cool, cool. We go first. Three land. Mm, not really that bad. Uh, let's get wilds in play right away because we have nothing else going on. Landfall wise, right? We'll get after it. Oh, Rune Crab, that's great. Really, really cool stuff. I hope you sleep at night very well. Razor in play. Playing our tap land, then forcing our basic in. Oh, <laughs> double crabs. Nice. Nice, bro! Oh, double crabs into a wilds. Quadruple nice, brah. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Why don't these kill crabs? <laughs> it's annoying and I hate it. Let's attack. So we can't get the fight. So let's just play it and tap. Land and play. Again, this is pretty awkward. I wish these return to natures did anything. This is basically dead too. But I really want to cast this on a, a fledgling. Let's cast it as the creature. I know it hurts. This is instant speed too, so we don't have to do it now. Which we should have waited to scare them, but... I want the fledgling. Really want the fledgling. Oh, they milled it! They milled two of them! And they got two wilds off the top. That's kind of like... A little obnoxious, isn't it? We're already down to 24 cards. Stop it! Maybe they think we still have something. Oops, I was joking. Exile their evolving wilds. All right, let's see what's up next on the sacrifice block. There's tutelage, sure. They draw a fable passage. Relic golem. This is actually our free to play deck. This is the free to play mill deck if you guys are interested. Um, I called this deck cancer in its title and I actually got a lot of trouble for that from people. And you can see why, though, like, zero rares, zero mythics, 
all it needs is a good draw hand. And that's try how I try to engineer all my free-to-play decks, is just like, if you get the right hand, you can just let it rip. And, you know, here we've got the exact opposite of that. We can destroy the enchantment, which is nice. A little late, but... Uh, let's just see if we can attack. Down to 11, keep the land in hand. Yes, mill, mill, mill. Mill, 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 mill. That's our fourth fledgling. The last thing we have is a single grazer. We're down to two cards. And, uh... That's not, uh, you know, just uh, something terrible. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Flawless victory, my friend. Very nice. Ouch. Going first is great, and the hand doesn't look bad. Maybe we can make it work. Maybe we can make it work. We have land plus flying and plus two plus one, so plus four plus three. So it's gonna be five four in the air. They get counters on those though, and they've got lifelink, which is going to be a problem. Enters tapped. Oh, we need three. That sucks. I guess we could have defended. That would have been smarter, maybe. I feel like they've got removal, though. So I want to do as much as we can. Uh-oh! Here comes Griffin Town. A little awkward. Let's grab a flames. In tapped. Oh, this is sorcery. I thought it was instance for a second. I guess it doesn't matter, because they have a blocker in the air anyways. Take the draw through the innkeeper, which is nice. The great horn is really nice on the guide mother. It's going to be pretty awkward though. Let's see what our opponent has in plan. Uh, or in store, I should say, for us. <laughs> in plan for us. Don't ask questions. Oh, no. Wish we could play our ushers of safety. They do take the flyer, though. Interesting. Flyer and not the draw engine. <clears throat> it's not good. Take our draw. Take another draw. We're not on the offensive, so we don't need flying. Other than to block, but we can't be, you know, blocking with the sorcery speed. 
Azure Cat's really good here. Ketra's teachings still guide. My sand will protect you. Down to nine, getting uncomfortable. Let's kill both of these tokens. Root Grazer in play so we can replay a land next turn. We have 10 life. Oh, another Charm Stray. Nice. Why didn't... I guess it doesn't matter. We're gonna get a bunch of life here. Man, that hurts. I will guard your advance. Man, that hurts. Getting beat up by some cats, boys. I kind of want to just go big, huge. Cost three. We could tap for one. Bounce it, replay it for two. That doesn't work. Oh, and then this gets played for three to bring in three. One. No, that still doesn't work. Right, that puts us at eight. Uh, nine. And we need uh, 10. We get a draw here. The Roiling Regrowth is not bad. Um, as far as attacking, I think we should still do it. Might just let it go through. I don't know. Feel like they should still deal with it. Okay, they want to keep the angel up. That's smart. Because now they hit for four. Or five if they put the token there. Or they do the minus two and they've got lethal. Minus two for lethal. Shoot. Close. And we're like just getting ready to send it home. We're so close. I wish we had that casket dealt with. Yeah, good game. Really, really close. Now is the time to strike. Our opponent goes first with no lands. Well, we have land, but it's not the right land. It means we have to mulligan. We keep six. The fledgling is a must have. And I think the Guide Mother can go. Keeping Return to Nature just in case. I mean, just in case we hate Yorion enough. Alright, Shelter in play. Forest, Fledgling, Wilds. Migratory Greathorn. Should be okay, but we're gonna have to see, right? It's always scary. Fledgling in play. This stays alive. 
I'm pretty happy. Bant control, though. Bant Yorion. Bant bounce, baby. Midnight clock. I don't know if that's great. Snaggle. There's no ramp for you. Oh, that was on our turn. I actually miss uh read that. I thought we had mana left over. I didn't realize the face switched already. I'm sorry, kids. I'm sorry. We miss missing out on a lot of damage here. It's okay though. We had our fledgling, and then they played that. I should pay more attention. We're in the play queue. It's we're just having fun today. All right, showcasing free to play deck. Don't worry about me. It's still fine. It's still okay. We're still okay, you guys. Right? We might have a lethal here, for all I know. It's a big hit, Mon! Let's protect it. Interesting. Plot thickens. Oh. That's it ever. We had to draw. It may happen to be a fledgling. She ain't got anything on us, brah. Let's go real wide this turn. And then we can play turn and be bouncing a land as well. I think it works out. It's better. Never mind. Back to back shatters. That's fun. That's fun. Go wide. Avoid single target. Interesting. Just grabbing a bunch of land, I guess. Good times. We're not really getting anything extra out of it. Right, it's two damage, in which we already do. And then we can bounce a land to replay on top the Great Horn. Or the Skyclave in general. We need a third Shatter to stop us, lol. Cycling for two, that's okay. Dig in some more. This only takes a creature or a land card, though. They get the grove. They can play extra lands. Lands become every color. I think we got them. Unless one of these is a shatter. Yeah, nice. Cool, cool. Our opponent goes first. But have you ever seen a hand like this? I had four of a kind the other day as well. Not Edgewall Innkeepers. If we can top deck land, we're in a really nice spot here. But, like, I, I, I don't know if that's going to happen. You know what I mean? 
awkward. We do get to draw. We pick up a planes. It's a crab. Hey, that is a land. And if we play it first, then we can edge wall directly into a guide mother. Hey, crab life. It's always with evolving wilds, right? Crazy. No second crab at least. Land, innkeeper, guide mother, go! We need that third land. Nice. Comes in tapped. We've got a choice or a chance to uh, pull an untapped land. That's not it. I think if we have two out, we don't need protection because they'll probably only use single target removal and our flyer can hit for one. More mill. This is the same person we played earlier. Oh my gosh. And we're beating right into the mill with the draw. Fledgling goes, that sucks. Too good. We can actually all attack. Two damage in, down to seventeen. Just need some more adventure. Four edge line keepers. This one gets countered. We should have beanstalk first, maybe. I think tap three in play is fine, though. See on five. All attack. We do three damage. 32 cards left. That's a bad play. Unless they want us to be redrawing. Okay, just having us respend our mana in general. Another crab. Good for them. Counter spells. I'm still going to lean into the draw. Top decking, so I think we can get this. Oh, they're humans. I forget about this sometimes. We need the fairy oats. Triple draw. Wow, it's good if we can get a fledgling. Nice. Fledgling goes into play for me. Got the counter on tap. She's your dirty dog. Let's get the grazer in play. No attacks here. They're top decking. Oh, that's not bad. They could pull a land here. No, they've got to discard it immediately. That's fine. Oh, and they mill return to nature, which could have dealt with it off the top. You take to our guide mother over top. We all attack. Give her five, six, seven. 
No, no, it's just six. Let's end our turn here. The mill sucks. Oh, another fledgling? Are you serious, bro? And now they're into getting lucky with Evolving World. Oh, pickaxe is gone. Pickaxe is gone. That's heartbreaking. For another six. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're gonna die. We 100% need a pickaxe to stay in deck. Oh, there it goes. It's gone. We have one left. <sighs> Cry. Our turn. That is not it. Nor do we want to draw. Or do we? There's no basic lands to pull with wilds. We're dead next turn anyways. There's a 16% chance we'll pull it only though. But we have three draws. So we're spending two mana in which we will have one, two, three, four, five, six. It costs one to recast. At which point we can play the wilds. So it's really only going up to uh, five, right? <laughs> and then we hit four, <clears throat> six, seven only because they can block the two big ones. So we basically have to risk that they don't get it, I think. See what they top deck. <clears throat> it's a land they win. Pickaxe was second from the top under the land. I think we win. Good game. That was close. Down to like the last cards, and uh, we do get revenge at least. So, you know, I'm kind of busy today. Cat cam's not working for some reason. Oh, I know why. It's not plugged. Maya's on her wheel making a racket. You'll have to pardon her. Looking for a forest off the top. But again, just focusing on our fledgling. Maya? Which is worse, you on the wheel or me yelling about it in the mic? <laughs> so we'll still go with the fledgling, even though it's going to get burned here because they're playing red. Oh, brother, being a little greedy here, maybe. Let's protect it with Shepard. We can innkeeper and Shepard next turn. Ooh, evolving wilds. Into the Cobra. Banner in play. Doubt that. They have another one. Two available mana here. Let's see what they use it on. Should be fine. It's a red source though. Could be a shock or a bone. Really ramping. They're looking to cast the world tree before it's even out. <laughs> we get hit for three. It's not the worst thing. Our turn. Well, that is delicious. I 
I'm scared about going super concentrated, but at the same time, how do you not? How do you not just go wiling out? Alright, go big or go home. Five, six. Let's get a power increase here as well. One more. This is a big bird, baby. I don't know if this thing's still fledgling. You know what? This is like the meanest fledgling I've ever seen. This is like full out dad bird. <laughs> Anyways, no protection here. So we are vulnerable. I mean, how can Gruul deal eight damage is my question. Grab and lands for the Cobra, eh? Put some at three available mana. They could Ugin us, is the thing, soon, right? And that's disgusting. Eight. We could, uh you know, get another one on that, but it's not enough. Nine won't do it. Let's hit. Razor in play. Pass our turn, hold up the, uh, you know, the bounce. Could be an Ugin, right? It could be an Ugin. It's a Scoot Swarm. Well, I'm glad they don't have flying. <laughs> but they could. Uh, maybe it's a Phoenix mutation, right? An Everquill Phoenix could do the trick. No, they're just going wide with it. So they will have three available mana here. Which takes them away from the Phoenix. That's a mutate cost of four. Ooh, they must have just drawn that. Hit for three. We take it. Our turn. On the Grazer. Grabs us the land. And wins us the game. Our opponent goes first. I'm going to toss this. This looks better. We have a fledgling. Let's toss Shepard. There's a dead turn, but the life gain is annoying. Just quick videos today, free to play decks uh, in the play queue because we've been doing so much work on the side. Uh, a couple of sponsorship deals, and then you know also all of the spoilers coming out. So we've been busy and uh, still trying to maintain a, a normal life as well, right? Of course, always. This can come in tapped. It's bait removal, so it doesn't hit our fledgling. It's always a creature you remove. 100% of the time. You can't let it sit there. You just can't. Oh, Maya's going crazy. She wants to play. She threw her ball right at me. That means we have to hurry up, you guys. Last match of the day. Uh, we could just kill that, which is fun. Uh, what do we want to do? Taking it to a 3-3 only. Let's keep rolling out. Slowly. But surely. But surely? Do I have to? <laughs> yes, we do. Fledgling is going to save us the game if it doesn't get removed. 
We can pickaxe. Hopefully, we draw a second forest. Well, that surely is annoying. <laughs> two damage. Well, I guess only one. This will be two. Uh, three total. No other lands, which is sad. It makes me basically just want to do this. But we could get the land from this. So let's just play this as a flyer. Looking for a forest. Well, even that works. I mean, not quite as good as a forest, but... It definitely does stuff. put it on the innkeeper for now. And tap to go for the three, but a pretty big hit. Just take that draw while it's still alive. Oh, there was a forest underneath, eventually. Hit for six. This particular innkeeper lives beside a uh, aggressive cliff face in which he needs to scale every day to get to the tavern. Uh, right? And it's worth it. He's having a good time when he gets there. Look at that guy. You wouldn't take him as a very skilled climber, but, uh, you know, he's got that strength kicking around, right? So they're feeling pretty awkward. They know they should remove the innkeeper. You know, they can also equip the Shadow Spirit to Veto and just take a decent-sized hit. The Airy is in play. They're going to be short um, a little bit of life. Right? He gains three or more life. Yeah, they're going to be just one short here. Uh, it's got Trample, so we leave it. And they end up being two shorts. Right? LOL, get it? <laughs> This is where it gets fun. Let's just take care of this now. It's a high priority. Would you please, can we have it? Land and play. We all go hooray. <laughs> yeah, we do. And it's a decent sized hit. And we could also play defensively here. Right? It's going to be... Awkward. They're at 18. You know how bad I just want to smash them, though? Let's get them. I know they've got life gain, and we should defend and kill it, but... I'm so greedy. All right, go big or go home. Let's sacrifice this glacier. Grabbing some basic lands in tapped. But that's a plus four, plus four on two creatures. So plus eight. And we already have 12, threes, 15, 16, 17. I think we get really close. Down to three. I'd love to see what they do this turn. Right? And again, we could have played defensively there. Probably a better choice. But what if they had removal? What if it was just single target removal? Right? So it's a good thing we did. Because we were going to lose that fledgling regardless. Do they defend? Do they hit? Airy is gone. At least we're down to six, which is frightening. Oh, down to three because of it. And that's not a land. But what we can do... We could bounce this and replay it, but it's got summoning sickness. Take our draw. I think we need a land to win. 
Oh, 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 the fledgling's got the shenanigans on it. I remember how annoying that is now for a second. But I think we still have it, question mark? Let's toss this on our guide mother. We get close, anyways. They have lethal on us regardless if we don't attack, so we just have to go for it. If we had the fledgling, it would be lethal 100%. So that's a nice feathers by them, or feathers. We push the other guide mother up. Doesn't really matter. Just spreading our threat. Over top. Pull a land. The innkeeper goes up. The guide mother goes up. And the great horn went up. All on its lonesome. Fledgling, I miss you. And we hit four... Nine, but they can block. Right, they do have to lose Vito here. Right, they've got to block with Vito. We have for six. We have a blocker uh, on the ground. This thing has flying. It hits us for two. They need to uh, gain one more life here somehow. Oh, there it is. And that's a very good game as far as I'm concerned. I love it. All right, woof. This is a powerful deck, but it is still a free-to-play deck. We need to remember this. It doesn't have a ton of protection, a little bit. It doesn't have a ton of removal, a little bit. It is enough to get the job done if you're on the play with a good opening hand. We can get turn four wins. We can get, um, you know, pretty consistent turn five and turn six wins. So the deck is there. However, you know, like many free-to-play decks, it won't hold up in a tournament unless you're playing against other people with free-to-play decks, which is a great reason to come hang out with us. We do have monthly artisan tournaments, free entry, cash prize. So you'll be playing decks like this and you'll be facing decks like this, a very friendly environment uh, to try to win some cash and you know maybe reinvest that into some more cards to grow your collection. So that's on me within the Discord. We also have Brawl tournaments as well. The 500,000 gem giveaway. And we also have 100 one-on-one -on -one sessions for a half hour that come with $20 uh, gift cards there as well. So, you know, there's a ton of things going on within the community. Uh, you know, it's all thanks to you guys and your support. I love to basically, you know, live, uh, you know, a pretty basic life and just reinvest everything back to the community uh, as we've been doing so far. So, you know, things have been going great. You know, the channel's doing really, really well. And again, I have you guys to thank for you for it. So whether this is your first video or you've been here since the start, uh, truly my heart goes out to you and we'll see you in the next video. Nice.